Okay, we're dealing with incomplete records here for her level. Um, no, this is, if you imagine this is a situation where somebody's not very good about keeping accounts. Uh, let's say they're a sole trader, a plumber, a carpenter, something like that. Maybe they've got a shop. Um, and they they have bits of information, but they haven't been keeping regular accounts. And from that, they ask an accountant, can you produce a trade and profit and loss for me? So to do this, we're going to be... Uh, doing a series of rough work, which is the doc in the first documents so I'll do it first and then we've got the blank document filled out ready for us to start putting numbers into Now I would spend the five minutes at the beginning laying out your blank documents uh, It just makes it an awful lot quicker as you deal with a number you can put the number straight into your answer If you make a mistake or you put a number in and it turns out it has to be changed later on um, Just put a single line through it and put the correct number beside it uh, that makes it an awful lot simpler for the examiner to see. And remember, um, if there's multiple numbers uh, used to try and create a final figure, make sure you show how you've done that uh, with rough work or with what you've put into your final uh, solution. We'll see this now, for example, if I just explain here, purchases. Uh, there's going to be two numbers that we're going to calculate because there's going to be credit purchases and cash purchases here. If you put the total figure in, uh, and it's wrong, you lose uh, all the marks. But if maybe your cash purchase was correct, but your credit purchase was wrong, uh, and you show both numbers, well, then you're still going to be getting some of the marks. So that's kind of important for you to think about doing. Okay, so let's start off um, top of the question. We're going to lay out um, the first part of it, which is for all, every trade and profit and loss count that you do, you do get marks for what you put at the top of the question, so labeling the actual document you're doing. So this is trade and profit and loss of P. Coleman um, for year end of 31st of December. So this, this is information at the beginning of uh, 2002, so 31st December 2002. Uh, and then we're going to do the balance sheet of P. Coleman. Um, as at 31st of December, uh, 2002. Okay. Now, um, so let's just run through the rough work that we're going to create. So the seven pieces of rough work that I do at the beginning. So the first is we look at our opening uh, capital. So what capital have at the beginning? And then from that, we need to work out either uh, what is the business worth, as in uh, what's the capital that he's put into the business, or is there goodwill? So one of those those two possibilities. Then we're going to need to come up with a list of drawings, and generally they'll take out cash during the year, and they'll take out stock uh, from the year uh, during the year, and there'll be other expenses paid that are going to be private. Uh, and when you see the word private, it means it's a drawing. Um, so those are two things you're definitely going to have included. Um, list expenses, we'll need to work out all of the expenses that uh, we have. We'll be separating the uh, drawings uh, from the amount that was used because what was used normally goes to profit and loss. Um, not necessarily the amount paid because bear in mind we have uh, prepaids and dues to take into account. But if, if any of that particular expense was used for the private section of the building, well, then that needs to be taken out. Uh, so it, it will reduce how much is going to be a business expense. Uh, the control account, now you can lay this out as a standard T account. What I'm doing here is I'm laying it out as uh, a simple table. And I'm, what I'm trying to do is look at the amount of money paid to my debtors and from that work out how much was my credit sales and my credit purchases. Um, final thing uh, you're going to be doing is you're going to have to work out a cash account and a bank account. Now, the bank account, you're working it out to try and find out what is our closing balance, what is the amount of money left over in the bank account at the end of the year, which is then going to go into my current assets or it could be a current liability if we're overdrawn. Cash account, we work out what do we spend uh, cash on and uh, what's what the figure we're trying to work out here is how much was our cash sales. So if we spent 100 grand on bills, well, where did the 100 grand come from? It must have come from the money that came into the till. So there's that's the rough work that we're gonna do. And we try and be systematic. And as we come up with a number, uh, so you're, you've got multiple documents open that you're working on at the same time. And we try and be systematic, starting at the top, working our way down, 
And as we do, when we come upon uh, no, uh, information needs to go into multiple places, we try and deal with all of those numbers at the same time. Uh, that's the easiest way of making sure that you don't forget something, because that is some, it is difficult uh, to make sure that you get this question completed on time. So the first information we look at top of the uh, question. This person bought a business for three hundred thousand, consisting of the following assets. So therefore, um, he put in three hundred thousand into the business, um, and he's got premises. Uh, two hundred twenty thousand. Um, he has stock. And stock is twenty thousand. Debtors is twenty five. Um, three months premises insurance prepaid. Uh, one hundred and eighty. Trade creditors twenty two. That's a liability. Um, wages due 400 so that's a bill that we owe okay so we're we're going to add all of these up and find out what the business is worth okay um, uh, at the very beginning so so there's all the assets on the business that he bought there's all the liabilities in the business he bought. So the, the difference between the two of those is going to be what the business is worth. Well, he spent 300000 on it, so he must have spent extra on goodwill. So his goodwill is 57220 uh, So I'm going to go straight and put that into my uh, fixed assets in my balance sheet. So the goodwill is 57220 Okay, now uh, let's move to my cash account. That's down here. So Coleman didn't keep a full set of accounts, was able to supply the following information. So lodgement's 50 grand, so that's money taken out. So that's gonna go into the bank. So 50 grand, and I'm expecting to see in my bank account a debit of 50 grand and call it cash. But we'll come to that when we look at the bank account in a second. Uh, general expenses is 30 grand. Uh, 30 grand. And I'm going to put that up here. Here's the first of my expenses. Um, purchases is 70 grand. Okay, um, grand, and I'll be able to put that that seventy grand. I'll be including when I deal with my purchases later on. Now there's other information to go in here. I'll come back to that in a minute. So let's look at our bank payments. So we spent money on equipment. Uh, Twenty five grand. Uh, light and heat is ten grand. And I'm going to put that light and heat into one of the expenses. Um, annual premises insurance. So insurance. And insurance premium is 3.6. Now, while I'm at it, I'm just going to have a quick look at the top of the question. It did say here when I was dealing earlier on, I remember I had insurance prepaid of 180. Okay. Now, that 180, that's an, from the opening balance sheet. If it's prepaid, it means it's it was paid last year, but it's going to be used up this year. So I'm going to include it in this year's figure. So that's a plus in this year's figure. So that means when I'm getting to the end of the year, I'm just quickly checking, it's three months insurance prepaid. So that means three months of this 3.6 is going to be prepaid for next year. So I'm going to take that out of this year and put it into next year. So it's uh, 3.6 uh, multiplied by 3.12. So it's going to be taken out of this year. So that means the amount we're going to use up in insurance is going to be uh, all of those numbers added together. 
Now, this closing prepaid, I'm going to put that in as a current asset. Um, so that's 900. Okay. So just uh, as I'm going through the numbers, dealing with the, uh, the, the individual numbers, I'm trying to see what, you know, can I do the adjustments and start filling in numbers into my balance sheet as I go. Uh, creditors is 32 grand, so I spent 32 grand on creditors. Again, I'm still dealing with bank account. Uh, interest is 3.5. So interest is an expense. I'm going to put that on my list of expenses. Um, now, uh, covenant for charitable organization a thousand well businesses don't invest money in charities private people do so I'm actually going to include that as a drawing taking money out of the business so charity a thousand euro I'll make sure I include it in my bank account um, Okay, and we have bank lodgings, we have debtors, is uh, 50 grand. Cash, 50 grand, which we had already put in because we expected that from a cash account, and dividends is 4,000. Now, those dividends, so that means businesses don't, generally don't earn income from investing money in other businesses and get dividends from them. So that's, that's money that's actually put in by the owner. So I'm going to call that capital. So the owner had shares in another business, received a dividend from it, and decided to put that into his business bank account. So that's putting money into the business. So that's capital introduced. So I'm going to put that over there now in my finance by my balance sheet. Uh, so I'm not balancing this yet because there's going to be some more uh, numbers to go into this document. So. I'm probably going to skip a few lines here to see what else do will happen uh, or what other payments might there be to do with my bank account. I'll come back to this now in a second. So, uh, each week, Coleman took stock uh, goods to the value of 80. So, every week he took 80 euro from the business. So, that's stock. So, 80 euro. Uh, sorry, 80. And he did it each week. So, times 52 weeks in the year. And he took cash for household expenses, so it's 100, uh, multiplied by 52 weeks in the year. Uh, he borrowed 80 grand on the 1st of 7th, um, used to purchase an adjoining premises costing 70. So I put that into my bank account. So I got a loan, that's the money coming in, which is the 80 grand. And then he spent money to buy premises. Uh, and that's 70 grand. Now the difference is just money that's going to end up uh, being sit in his bank account. So uh, we don't need to worry anything about the difference between those two numbers. Um, it was agreed. Now what we need to do is just have a quick think about when we take out a loan we have to repay the loan. So with businesses we're repaying two different things. One we have to repay the 80 grand we borrowed and secondly, we have to pay interest. So we have interest expense, which has been mentioned up here already. So, But we need to think about how, are, and there's two different ways of repaying the original 80 grand. Now, one thing we're going to do, and I might as well show you this in the balance sheet now. So I've got a loan here of 80 grand on my balance sheet. Now, one way of doing it is I can reduce the value of my 80 grand, let it get smaller and smaller and smaller as time goes on um, uh, until eventually this loan is worth nothing. So as we pay it off, the loan gets smaller. Another possibility is uh, we leave the loan as 80 grand as an amount we have to pay in a number of years time and we'll set up in our fixed assets, we might set up a new type of bank account, an investment fund or investment bank account, which will take money from our bank account and that fund will get bigger and bigger and bigger over the years until it's enough that we'll take all the money from the investment fund and use it to pay off the 80 grand loan. So just to repeat, 
we either uh, take money from the bank account, make this loan smaller and smaller all the time, or uh, we'll set up an investment fund, and that investment fund will the loan will stay the same every year, but the investment fund will get bigger and bigger, and then eventually the investment fund will be big enough that we can close it and use the money in the investment fund to pay off the loan. So there's two ways of dealing with it. So that's the theory of it. Let's just look and see what happened in uh, this particular question. So I took out a loan first the seventh, uh, purchase of joint premises. Agree to pay interest on the last day of each month rate ten percent per annum. We'll deal with the interest in a second. The capital is repaid in twenty fourteen, and provided this, the bank was to transfer uh, five hundred the last day of each month uh, to an investment fund grant. So I'm going to set up an investment fund here as in fixed assets. And uh, an amount of money is going to be transferred into this every month. And uh, the bank was to transfer 500. So this was happening automatically. And it's, it, it was the last day of every month. We took out the loan the first of seven. So that means there'd be six months involved. So I'll have uh, six months uh, multiplied by 500 euro. That's what's in my investment fund at the moment. And that three grand is going to be... Uh, uh, taken out of my bank account okay so it says three thousand and i'm just going to say investment fund now i separately i'm going to have to pay interest and interest has been mentioned here but we need to work out is this the right amount of interest generally we'll have underpaid our interest so the amount of interest back to my expenses here the amount of interest that we've used should be 80 grand which is the amount i borrowed multiply by what is the interest rate the interest rate is 10 percent per annum so times 0.1 okay that's 10 percent and multiply by six months so six twelfths so i should have paid four thousand i actually paid three and a half so that means i owe another 500 uh, at the end of the year so that's how i get my uh, amount used it's the diff the the closing due is the difference in what we were charged the amount we used and the amount we actually paid so because you haven't paid enough i'll put that in as a current liability okay so i've now dealt with that uh coleman estimated 25 percent light and heat uh interest payable should be attributed to the private section of business so that's going to be uh, in my list of drawings so i've got light and heat Uh, what else? 20% uh, of interest payable is private uh, interest. Now we're going to calculate those in a second uh, because I need to find out is there anything at the, at the very last note here will be things that are relevant to my balance sheet. I need to see are any of those expenses or incomes that are prepaid or due because that will influence how much has actually been used up because you may have paid a, a one amount of money but the amount we've been charged or used could be a different amount of money so we need to take that into account uh, especially when we're calculating our drawings now in a second so i'm going to come back to my drawings in a minute so i'll deal with my final balance sheet so including the assets liabilities were stock 21 grand so i'm going to put that into my final numbers here so stock is 21 grand and I'm also going to put that in as a current asset. Uh, debtors is 33 grand. Um, uh, trade creditors is 25 grand. Current liability. Um, cash is 400 so that's going to be a current asset so I'm just going to squeeze in so we've got cash 500 uh, electricity due is 100 now this 500 actually before I move on to the rest of that I might as well just take this cash 500 and put this into my cash account. So I've got 500 there. 
um, because I'm going to have to come back and balance this now in a second. Uh, electricity due 100. So that's going to be uh, a current liability. Um, how much is it? Electricity due is 100. Now, that electricity is to do with light and heat. So that light and heat I'm going to put up uh, here. So we've a closing figure of a due. So the plus another 100 has to be added on. So that means the amount used is going to be the opening uh, plus the closing. Okay, and plus if there was... Sorry, um, the amount paid and then the opening and closing take into account. Now, I'm just quickly checking at the top of the question, was electricity due at the beginning or uh, a light and heat? Or you could have a stock of heating oil. So that's like a prepaid of heating for next year. There isn't. Okay. So the opening uh, had nothing uh, relevant there. Now, um, I'm just looking here. I can see there's a wage is due at the beginning. No wage is due at the end. So wage is due... It doesn't have a separate payment for wages, so wages will be included in general expenses. So there was a 400 due at the beginning, which is not for this year. So of the 30,000 paid, 400 was for last year. So I'm going to take that number out because it's not relevant uh, for this uh, for this current year. It was to do it last year. So I, no, sorry, uh, 30. So that means the amount we use for general expenses is 29.6. Now we can go and start looking at our um, drawings. 25% of light and heat used is going to be private. So, uh, so 10.1 times 0.25. So that's going to be the drawing. So that the amount we're going to actually use in our profit and losses is 7525. And I'm going to put my light and heat in there. Um, next, 20% of interest payable for the year. So interest payable is interest that we should have paid for the year, which is actually the same as the interest used. Sometimes I might say uh, a percentage of the amount paid during the year. In this case, no, it's both payable. So the interest payable is going to be uh, is 4,000. And how much is it? Uh, 20%. So 0.2, we'll multiply that by. So that means that the amount of our interest expense is going to go to our profit and loss um, is 3,200. And the 800 then is going to be our, our drawing. So we can add up all of our drawings now. So 13,685. So I'm going to put that number in down in my balance sheet. And it's a minus number. I'll be taking it away. Um, okay, so I, at this stage, I have most of my documents done. I still need to do my control accounts to work out my credit sales and purchases, but I'll come to that in a second. So I'm going to just try and make sure that I've finished off all the documents. I'm opening capital statement here. I've calculated my goodwill, and I put my goodwill into my balance sheet. We see that there already. Our capital that was invested in the business was uh, 300,000. So I'm going to put that in down here in my finance buy. Um, and I got my loan mentioned there. That's okay. Um, I'll be able to start doing my trading profit and loss now in a second. Um, now I'm just going to have a look at my fixed assets here. Um, we had premises at the beginning of 220 and we got a loan and the loans by more premises worth 70 so that means in my fixed assets I'll have premises of um, 290 so the 220 at the beginning plus the additional premises that we bought that cost 70 and I know we got a loan of 80 for them but the premises were worth 70 um, now, I'm just looking to see were there any other fixed assets bought during the year. There was no other fixed assets we had at the beginning. Uh, there's no mention at the end of other fixed assets. So uh, we bought equipment for 25. So that's going to be a fixed asset. Uh, and that's it. Okay, so equipment. Okay, so what we have at this stage is we have our current assets. Um, we have cash mentioned. I just have to work out my bank figure. 
which I haven't calculated yet because I have to balance my bank account to do that. I have all of my current liabilities done. So I'll just add them up now. So there's all my current assets. Now our current liabilities, remember we do, you only do the maths on this at the very end if you have time. What I'm trying to get is as many numbers into the question as I can at this stage, because we've been at this quite a while now. Uh, so uh, I need to balance my bank account the same way as I normally would have balanced my bank account. So I'll add up all of my, uh, I'll add up all of the debit sides. This is the money that came in, and add up the credit side. So we can see that the credit side is smaller. So that means that I have a balance CD on this side, and I have a balance BD on the debit side, which means I have money in the bank. So that means that bank is a current asset. It's not a current liability. I'm not overdrawn in this in this question. So um, so I know the two totals must be the same. So uh, my balance CD is going to be uh, the total figure minus the uh, so it's going to be the total figure, which is all of the receipts, minus all the payments, and that gives me my balance CD. And the balance CD is going to go there, now. And that number then is going to be this figure that I'm going to put up here in my current assets. So now I can finish my current assets, and again, like I say, in the exam, I wouldn't do this until the very end, but obviously I've got a calculator that's able to do this for me, and I can work out my my working capital and my net assets is going to be all of my fixed assets plus my uh, working capital and remember all of my fixed assets I'll add them up now so now I have a total figure for my net assets and that capital employed figure hopefully is going to give me the same number but again as I've said in previous questions if I don't get it to balance I'm going to spend one minute at it, no more. So now I need to move and have a look at doing my trading profit and loss. So um, I'll start off my sales. So we have cash and credit sales. So we would have had in my, when I have calculated my cash account here, uh, I've got these three payments, plus I've got a balance CD. So I've got a total figure for cash of those numbers. Uh, I've got no opening balance because this was a brand new business. Um, he bought a business, so there was no cash to start with. So that means all of the money that came in. So when I balance it, all of the money uh, that came in must have been for cash sales. So my cash sales is this is the total. So all of the all of those bills that were paid by cash, not paid by check, they must have. Uh, all the cash to come from to pay for those must have come from selling goods for cash, goods sold out of the till. Now, separately, we're going to need to work out what about our credit sales. So we know what our cash sales is. We need to work out our credit sales. So we start this by looking at uh, our payments to debtors, uh, or sorry, receipts from debtors and payments to creditors. So debtors, we we lodged fifty grand from our debtors. Uh, creditors, we lodged or we paid out, sorry, thirty-two grand to our creditors. How much uh, uh, of that fifty grand was paid out? How much was owed for last year? So we look at the top. So debtors is twenty-five grand. Um, how much debtors is owed at the end? Uh, debtors is thirty-three grand. So the credit sales then is going to be all of those numbers added together. So the 50 grand uh, minus the 25, take away the 25 that was owed at the beginning, and then we're going to add on the 33 that we still haven't been paid that is owed at the end. So that means we have 58 grand that we've earned from credit sales. We want something similar with our creditors. So we look at our uh, creditors at the beginning of the question. Uh, trade creditors is 22 grand. And at the end of the question, trade creditors is 25 grand. So we're taking away the opening uh, because that's not relevant to this year. That's creditors' bills we owed for last year. And we're going to add on the extra bills that were owed at the end of this year. So that gives us our total figure. 
and that's total credit uh, uh, total credit purchases that is so now let's go and uh, look at my uh, trading profit and loss so I now have my sales figure and my total sales figure up here way up there I'm gonna have is um, the figure that I've worked out here uh, 58 plus uh, so I have that plus I have to add on my cash sales so that's my credit sales I got from my control account and my cash sales I got from doing my cash account uh, so that's my sales figure so my opening stock is given the top of the question is 20 grand my purchases figure so again I'm gonna to have to add my cash purchases and my credit purchases so I'll go down to my credit in my control accounts again so I'll go to my uh, creditors control account I'll add that and then I'm going to look in my bank uh, payments to see what money was paid for purchases or is there anything here yeah in my cash account I can see this purchases mentioned there so the total of my purchases then is uh, those two figures added together so I can add on my my uh, opening stock to my purchases I'll take away my closing stock and I get a gross profit. Now, other incomes. Um, it did say down the bottom here that uh, we have 240 earned by the fund to date. So that's interest that's been earned from my investment fund. Uh, now, and that 240 has been added to the investment fund. So the investment fund was uh, three grand, which is uh, the figure that we had already, plus the 240. So now the investment fund is 3240. So we've put in 500 a month for six months, plus we're adding the interest that's been earned to it. So the investment fund has now gone up. So I'm gonna add my um, gross profit and the other incomes. And we have a total figure there so far. Now I'll put my expenses in. So I need to just go to my table, which has all of my expenses in it. Okay, so uh, general expenses. There were no drawings for general expenses, so the profit and loss then is going to be that number. Uh, the insurance premium um, is that number because there was no drawings for insurance and they're the only expenses. So I have generally in these questions, when you do them, you'll generally have um, uh, four, possibly sometimes five expenses. So I'm just gonna copy those and put those into my list of expenses. And then the amount of money then uh, that I have, th sorry, the amount that's been charged my profit and loss. So those numbers there, copy them and I'll put those in. Uh, so general expenses, no, wrong number. So, uh, so light and heat is that, uh, insurance premium is that, and then interest is going to be the three, two. So I'll add all these together. I get my net profit. So 16,485 now is my net profit. So I can, that's the final number then that I'll put down here in my finance buy. So now I can work out my capital employed. Now, first of all, we can see, as I said earlier on, we can see that I'm out by an amount. So I'm gonna have a very quick look and see where am I out. So the difference between the two sides I have is 57,960. Uh, so I, I would have a little look in the question to see, can I find that number? Um, and if I can find where that is, then I'll, I'll go and make my correction, but I'm literally gonna spend one minute at it. It, it might be one number that I forgot to add in. Uh, so, but that might be a couple of marks that I might gain by finding that number, putting it in. But generally it, it will take you too long to actually find where the error is. So I would leave it at this stage, move on to the next question in the exam.